Welcome to Archaeotech Assimilation, where we discover and investigate the technology of the Imperium and the tools of chaos. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Archaeotech Assimilation. My name is John and today I am joined by Glenn. Hello mate, how are you doing? Hello, yeah not too bad. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, I think we got the lucky job compared to uh, Dave and Shane last week. This is a much better episode. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one compared to uh, last week. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel bad for missing out. <laughs> well, not really. But um, yeah, so yeah, I like this one. Um, before we get into it, then any sort of, without spoiling it, what was your like, favourite parts or what did you really like about this one? Um, I don't want to sort of specifically say anything too much because I have a tendency to get carried away whenever we do a little, yeah. oh, what did you enjoy with this? And then kind of spoil uh, half the stuff. So yeah, I just say it was, a, it was a really good episode and I don't know, there just seemed to be something a bit different about the animation as well. It just seemed to flow more like a cartoon than, mm. than the, the, the previous episodes. I don't know what it was about it. Just there's a really... lot of um, stop motion it's not quite the, the right way to say it but it's like you get a little it sort of pans across a lot of stills if you know what I mean so you have like the whatever's in the foreground and then the background seems to pan around it but this yeah. was a bit more like like you say a bit more of a everything moved yeah like an actual cartoon rather than a oh, I don't know what is it it's weird, isn't it? It's a weird style that they've got that they've had for a while. Yeah, like a it's like a living comic book as opposed to an actual cartoon. Yeah, that's it. That's a good way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I suppose let's get straight into it. Um, so if you haven't seen it before, we uh, go through the story beat by beat and uh, pick out the bits we liked and um, and we sort of uh, just talk about it. So let's get into it. Take this as your spoiler warning uh, as we look at artifacts. So. Uh, this episode starts with a bang. We have a squad of Black Legion Terminators blasting their way uh, through a Necron Warriors um, uh, army on a tomb world. Uh, and eventually they hunt down what uh, I think looks like a, a cryptic or something like that. Yeah, it uh, looks like it. Yeah. Um, the leader, a veteran named Hesoid, is about to kill this Necron. Uh, and the Necron offers an exchange for his life. Um, for the key to some power, uh, tells them of a fleet of Aldari ships that have the ability to, or on a fleet of abandoned Aldari ships, uh, there is an artifact with the ability to dig beneath reality uh, and create their own webway. Um, the Terminators consider their options, but ultimately just, uh, decide to destroy the Necron. Uh, but before they can, the voice of none other then Abaddon, the despoiler, tells them to let it speak and approaches them. Uh, the Necron produces what must be a, a key or something containing directions to the artifact, and Abaddon orders his Terminators to find the artifact, and as a reward to the Necron, he shoots it in the face. Uh, good opening. Yeah, I was really surprised to see Abaddon. Like, we don't... We don't see a lot of like the big name characters in these episodes. I think with a few in the Space Wolf one yeah. and the Gasgol one, but that was a story about a story about Gasgol rather mm. than actual Gasgol and, and Yarick themselves. Yeah. But this was, yeah, nice little appearance by possibly one of the biggest characters in 40k in general. Yeah, uh, it was good. It was short but uh, powerful cameo for him. Yeah. And he looked like a mean bugger as well. Yeah, well, he, as well he should be. Yeah. I really like the Terminators. I like the, I mean, I like the um, Chaos Terminators anyway, but I really like the way they were drawn. Um, like that, you can just see that guy's um, power claws glowing. I really like the effects they had. Yeah, they were really good. They were a really good looking squad, actually. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so from there, they, um, the Black Legion um, Terminators take their ship and eventually find the Aldari ships were basically um, all mashed together in a space hulk. 
and these really ugly looking um, astropath things uh, tell them that the artifact is on board, but they won't be able to teleport close to it. And once they're on board, it will be very hard to get them back. Um, but ignoring the warning, um, they decide they're going to go for it. And as they're getting the good news from the um, from the psychers, they detect a number of Drukari raiding crafts on the other side of the Space Hulk um, and decide that they're not actually part of it, but they are like a raiding party, but appear to have no life forms on board. Uh, the Terminators begin arguing amongst themselves, trying to decide if it's a trap or not, uh, until the captain tells them that they have no choice but to go. And with that, they teleport on board. Um, and it's not long before um, they get too far. They're charged at by some Drakari, um, but the Terminators kill them easily enough. And it's actually really brutal as well. I think one of them gets like squeezed into, into half and the other yeah. one's face blown clean off. Yeah. And Proper uh, savage chaos. Yeah, as we've come to expect from these hammer rollers now, they're not shy about holding off the gore, which is always nice. Yeah, no, they, they do give you a nice bit of good uh, bloodshed. Yeah. That's nearly it as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and those things, like, I mean, the psychos have it bad enough on, uh, I suppose, the, the loyalist ships, but these guys are mutilated to hell. Now, I don't know what that thing is in the bottom corner, but that's that's not in the job description, I'm sure, when he first started. Uh, no, no, probably not. But I don't know, I'm sure it has some warp reasoning to it that mm. are strung up like that. Maybe. A bit of Slanesh going on, maybe. I think that's beyond Slanesh, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so happy with what they've done the Terminators move on uh, but very quickly their tracking system dies uh, suddenly in the distance a Necron appears but appears to vanish as soon as they start shooting at it uh, some more ghosts appear this time this time they at first I thought they looked Aldari but then uh, it sort of pans around and they're clearly Drakari um, and they all start shooting each other but nothing happens um, and then suddenly the Drukari take on a solid form and one of them is able to take a, a shot, taking one of the Terminators out through the eye. Um, they start firing back and the Terminators finally wipe them out and they manage to continue on to the vault and find the artefacts. Um, as they enter, there seem to be more dead Drukari already on the floor, uh, which already have uh, bolter and power weapon wounds. As the captain reaches for the artefacts, reality starts changing around them uh, several times showing different corpses on the floor, uh, including their own at some points, and also different scenes of battle happening around them as well as they're closing in. Um, the, the Black Legion and Jukari seem to just keep fighting each other in slow motion, whilst a Necron emerges from nowhere and approaches the artifact, um, the opposite side from Hezoid. Um, as Hezoid reaches out, he's about to touch the artifact, um, but is completely frozen in time millimeters away and this was a really good like scene i think seeing the main terminator walking through and everything changing around uh, i could watch that a few times i did watch it a few times i thought it was really well done yeah probably one of the best bits of animation in the series yeah it was a, it was a very very nicely done scene yeah do you do you know who the necron is only from a little bit of google uh, yeah, and a few, and obviously all the the Facebook and uh, Instagram alerts that have gone up. Um, yeah, wasn't sure if you were aware of who he was. Uh, I'm not. Like, I, like I say, literally from like the most basic of um, Google searches, but he is the next uh, part I was going to touch on. So if you want to tell us a bit more, then go ahead. Yeah. So obviously this uh, would be Traz in the Infinite. He is the collector of many weird and wonderful relics. And one of his things in his collection is essentially a, a bunch of living holograms that capture moments in time. That is, uh, is sort of one of his prized possessions is watching things happen over and over again. Mm. Some, of like the, some of the times that he's captured are... You know, sort of like epic deeds. Obviously, this one is not so much an epic deed, but um, yeah, he just uh, 
like sort of tormenting things that are aware that they're going through the same motions over and over again. But yeah, that's who that guy is. Is it? Um, I take it obviously he's not a new character. Clearly, um, have you ever have you read any like books or any things that he's in? Uh, I've not read the books other than just the stuff that um, uh, is in codexes about him. He's been in codexes for years now. Yeah. Um, I did actually like tabletop roles wise. He's actually quite a good. It was quite a good character. I don't know what he's like in, in the newer codex if he's even still in the new codex, but yeah, he used to be quite cool. Mm, cool. And now, it, I, I mean, this is like probably I really enjoyed. Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Book of Shadows was it the one the the Zeech one. Uh, I like that twist ending, but this is probably the best ending we've had so far. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go for it quickly. Um, so obviously we find out who he is and um, he starts talking to the, to the captain, the Hezoid, um, who can still hear and see everything. Um, and he sort of says like when the Necrons first um, obtained their immortality, they had only thought of war and conquest, but soon discovered that living forever means that they needed something else and he discovered that he needed to be entertained uh, and he's fascinated with physical matter and consciousness and how they operate and collects these moments uh, in from physical objects um, and reveals to him that the Black Legion on board are part of a time loop. They've tried to reach this artifact a thousand times and they, this is probably the closest they've come to reaching it on this occasion. Um, Sometimes they arrive first, sometimes others do, um, but always he loves watching the outcome. Uh, and no matter the result, he loves every minute, can't get enough, especially the look on their faces where every single time he pauses and gets to explain what they're going through and see the realisation on their faces uh, and tells them that they're locked in a tesseract. Um, he then unfreezes them and the captain grabs hold of him and demands that they're released and he tells them that they're not his prisoners. The only way to break the cycle is to refuse to enter the ship in the first place. They always have the option, but always, always come aboard. Uh, and then with that, he resets the clock to the moment the Terminators were back on their ship. Uh, and as always, they make the decision to come aboard. He watches on, holding the Tesseract, places it on a plinth, happy with himself. And as he walks away, we see on this bottom screen, this hall of uh, his collection of different creatures uh, as the episode ends. Uh, what an ending. What, what a great little reveal. Yeah. It was very good. Very well done. And then, uh, do you know, I, I recognise a couple of bits and pieces from there, but like, what stands out? Like, did anything grab your attention from his hall of collection? Uh nothing stood out sort of specifically in that obviously there's a few things that are recognized but you know you've obviously got an elder titan somewhere in the background mm. you've got you know various helmets and guys on the left so yeah is, what, that, um, is that a thunder warrior in there one of his things in his collection is a giant marine in baroque armor that's yeah. always been one of the things in his background for years and years. Loads of people were like, oh, is it Thunder Warrior? Oh, is it one of the lost Primarchs? Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, not 100% what it could be. I think it's sort of vague enough there that it lets, it's one of the things that Games Workshop likes to do. It's like, oh, here's a thing. What do you think it is? They're very, very good at that. Yeah. Right, yeah, it was cool, and obviously everyone's going crazy for it online, saying there's this, mm. like, different bits and pieces in there. Yeah, but, um, I, yeah, I think it's probably one of my favourite episodes. Like, I don't know anything about the um, the Necron character at all, but just like from that, I thought it was really interesting, really cool thing. It makes you want to know a little bit more about him as well. I think. Yeah, it's definitely another one of those um, hammer and bolters that make you go, "Oh, I just want more for this story." <laughs> Yeah, like, do you have a favorite a favorite bit or from that? Uh nothing particular, other than like just like the 
like the overall story mm. and the overall look of it, like it being a little bit more like an actual cartoon. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just a very, very good episode. Well, probably one of my favourite Hammer and Bolters, if not my favourite. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, an e- I think it's definitely a good one that's easy to w- to rewatch, even though now, like, you know, the ending, it, it's a good one to watch again just for the animation as well. Because, mm. I mean, Cadia Stands, the last one, I thought the animation was the only good thing about the episode. Everything else was hard to watch. Yeah, for one. me, that one, that one was pretty much, let's look at all of the different tyranny things that they got in. Yeah. Like in the background and stuff like that, it's like, oh, there's an execrate, and oh, there's a thing, and there's a yeah, but yeah, yeah. this I, was really solid the whole way through. I really liked the fact that, like, the Terminators d- didn't really seem to like each other either, but like, they had them two that were just bickering the entire time, yeah, a bit of petty and fighting that's quite common in uh, the, the chaos side, yeah, especially like when they're like, one of them saying, I'm not going on there. It's, it's a bad idea, it's a trap, and the other one's just basically calling him a coward, and like, they threaten to kill each other, and then, yeah. and then, and then uh, he's always just like, come on, let's go, let's get over it, and then even when they're on the ship, uh, they just don't stop, what was it, they're like, they were walking down one bit, and there's a light flickering, and the one who didn't want to go is like, this, this ship's supposed to be dead, how's there a light flickering? And the other one literally says, like, we've lived for thousands of years fighting monsters, and and chaos gods, and you're worried about a little light? Come on. Yeah. Although he was right. He was right to be worried. Yeah. I like nice. that. Yeah. Just basically, oh, you're scared of a light, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. No, but another good one. So uh, hopefully I'll, the next one will be just as good. I look forward to another one now. Which number is this? Is this nine, is it? Uh, I think this is eight, I think. So we probably don't have that many more left. Yeah. Hammer and Bolter. It can only be a matter of time until we get the Black Templar series because that was the last thing that was advertised, wasn't it? Uh, was the Thai one not going to be the next one? Was it oh, the Exodite? I don't know. That, I mean, that felt like it was really heavily advertised at the launch and then I haven't heard too much more. Yeah, well, I, I think... It was an advert, actually. You're right. I think it yeah. was that and the Templar one sort of mm. together with some more yeah. Hammer and Bolter. So we'll see. I'd be interested to see what comes next. Yeah. But um, cool. Unless you've got anything else you want to say about this episode, we'll uh, we'll wrap up and uh, say make sure you check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And please like and share this video and subscribe to YouTube. And we're on Spotify and iTunes and Patreon. And Element Games link is in our bio. And some of us play combat cards more than others play combat cards, and some of us aren't playing at all. Um, but we hope you enjoy this episode. Let us know what you think about um, Hammer and Bolt in general. Uh, we'll have a plus and about our review as well in the comments below and we'll see you on the next video bye as always we would like to thank you for listening to our Iron and Ceramite podcast if you liked us then you can also find us on YouTube Facebook Instagram and any other good podcast services just remember in the grim darkness of the far future There is only war.